Greetings viewers, welcome back to the channel. In today's video, we're underneath this 1997, or was it 98? I think it's a 98 Subaru Outback, five-speed manual, 2.5 liter. Today's topic, shifter sloppiness. A lot of older Subarus experience it. I've had quite a few myself. We're gonna go over how to fix it, how to tighten that shifter up, what parts you're gonna need, all the step-by-step -step processes. I've made a video on this in the past and it was a little bit frustrating to a lot of you viewers based on comments because at the time I filmed that video, I had filmed a vehicle in the yard, basically in the driveway on jack stands and I could not get a camera back here to show you the steps of driving the roll pin out of the shifter universal joint and uh, just included some still images and a lot of people wanted to get a better view of it so reshooting this video to show that off so what we've got to be replaced is the universal joint which i will show when we get to that step which is usually the main cause of slop in older subaru shifters we have a factory wrx wrx uh, bug eye shifter that we're going to put in the car should give a shorter throw over the taller factory outback shifter. Uh, they gave me an STI shift knob. Their choice, it was uh, included with the WRX shift um, lever. And I got some polyurethane uh, shift bushings from Cartboy. So the front bushing and the rear bushing. I'm gonna replace the old factory ones. I believe this car has 240, 250,000 miles on it. So the factory rear ones are probably good and well shot. So just another something to firm up the feel of the shifter. So all that said, let's go ahead and get into it. We're gonna start underneath, knock the roll pin out for the universal joint. We're gonna separate that from the transmission and unbolt the uh, nut that retains the front arm and bushing, knock that loose, bring the car down. We'll pull the console out, the shift boot off, and pull the shifter out the top. And we will put the new bushings in, the new shifter arm, and reassemble. So, let's get at it. All right, guys, even with the car on the lift, it's a really tight spot to try to film this. But here's what we're after. We've got our universal joint right there. As you see that little pin that's hanging down, that's a double roll pin. So what we've got to do is drive the central roll pin out. Once the center roll pin's out, we can push out the outer roll pin and disconnect that universal joint from the uh, shift rod coming out of the transmission. Then we've got, I believe, a 10 millimeter or 14 millimeter nut uh, right here. And that will release this bushing and that arm of the shifter as well. So, again, guys, this is hard to film. It's not a good angle to get a camera into, so hopefully you can see the process a lot better than in the old video. All right, center roll pin starting to move. Just notice that the shifter return spring that holds the shifter in neutral is missing on this car. So we're gonna have a little bit of play even after replacing this joint uh, without sourcing and replacing that spring that hooks here and there. pin is almost all the way out now. Like I said, it's awkward to get at and it's a bit aggravating, but you take your time and you'll get it out of there.
And there it went. So here is our inner roll pin out. Now this out of the way, we can drive out the larger outer roll pin. There goes our outer roll pin. Make sure it doesn't roll away. Or if it does, keep an eye on it. You don't wanna lose these. So there's our outer roll pin. We'll set that to the side. Place for safekeeping with the inner roll pin. Don't want those getting lost. And now we can come back and push our joint back and now it's freed up. Now we'll go ahead and take loose our nut. Which I believe is a 12. It could be a 10 millimeter as well. Let's see here. Okay, 12 millimeter. millimeter nut and this little end plate comes off like I said normally you'll have a spring right there on that little piece there and that's what holds your shifter in the neutral position so it doesn't flop but like I said the springs long missing on this one so we got that out of the way now this whole shift rod and bushing slides right off of that shaft and we'll set that to the side now we can bring the car down and disassemble the console, pull the shifter out of the top. All right, now inside the car, we need to get the center console out of the way. So I open the lid, there's two Phillips head screws back here. Remove them. Once we got them out of the way, we can pull up, pull this trim work off from around the parking brake, pull up again and back, and unscrew the shift knob. Set that to the side. Now we can get in here. We got two screws up here, two here in the middle, and there's, I believe, two or three more back in the bottom of the center console storage area. We'll remove those so we can slide the whole center console back and out of the way so we can access the shifter better. All right, three screws back in the storage area. We can slide this back. And get it out of the way. Now we come to this area. Always just tear that and pull it to the side. It's not gonna hurt anything. So now we've got six Phillips head screws around the plate here that holds the 
uh, dust boot and noise boot around the shifter. All right, now lift up our plate, set that to the side and pull the dust boot. So now we gotta push the, so we need to pull back on this forward rod until it disengages the universal joint from the transmission. Now that and the other rod are free. Now we pull forward to get the back of the shifter base out of the rear bushing. There we go. Now that that's popped out of that rear bushing, and pull the assembly out. All right guys, shifter assembly is out of the car. Here is the usual suspect for that sloppy shifter. The universal joint is really worn. These rubber bushings inside wear, fall apart. Then you get a bunch of slop in there, then your shifter gets really loose. On top of that, we've got this old rubber worn out uh, bushing here. We've got the old bushing that's in the car we need to replace with the new polyurethane one. So that said, let's go ahead and get to it. Probably gonna go ahead and knock out this bushing first. Normally you gotta cut them. Uh, sometimes you can torch them. Sometimes if they're really worn, you can get them to press through. Might be able to press this one through. My hand, look up. Yep, all right, so got that one out. Super mushy, not really torn or screwed up in any physical way, but a lot of mush to it. So I'm gonna go ahead and clean up the housing, get all the oil off, grease. Got a little bit of a gear oil leak from the shifter rod on the transmission. And that has gotten back, gotten back here on the rubber bushing. So let's get that cleaned up. Now the polyurethane bushings are two piece. You basically just slide them in each half. Mush them in there and you are set to go. So that's all done up and ready to go. Uh, now we're gonna remove the nut and bolt here to take the old universal joint out. Should be a 12 mil if I recall correctly. Let's just check that. 12 mil and 12 mil. So I'll get another 12 mil wrench. Sorry about the shaky cam, guys. I'm trying not to shake the camera on the tripod above me. This table went too sturdy, so I'm gonna get a little bit of movement. All right, remove the nut and bolt. Hopefully yours isn't rusted in place. Mine's kind of rusty, but it's freeing up. and out. Set that aside. Yep. And there is our shifter bushing. You see all of that slop in there. All the bushings are gone. It gives us our really loosey-goosey, no good feeling shifter. So let's grab our new original equipment Subaru shifter. Part number is 35047AC030. Go ahead and pop that bugger open, and get it installed. Nice and tight. Nice new bushings there. All right, so we we'll take a little break, parts cleaner. Clean this up. A little bit of rust on here, probably gonna take a 
uh, wire brush and just hit it and knock all the rust out of there so we don't have any worry going back together. I'm gonna go do that right now off camera. All right, got all that rust knocked out of there with the wire wheel. Go ahead and put our new universal joint in place. And we'll go ahead and put the bolt nut back in, tighten her back down. Don't know if there's an actual torque specification for this nut and bolt in the manual. I'm just gonna snug it up for now. I'll check and we'll come back and put a final torque if it does have a final torque in the manual that I can find. All right, we got that. So our new universal joint is in, new polyurethane bushing here is in. So next thing we're gonna do is put the WRX shift lever in there and that will shorten our throw a good three, four inches here as a comparison. So what we need to do is there's a snap ring on the bottom of the housing here. We need to release that snap ring so that we can get the shifter, um, the little ball joint here out of the base. So just take our snap ring pliers, grab that snap ring, release the snap ring. This one's kind of stuck on one side. So just get the one side out of the groove and work it around with the screwdriver slowly so it doesn't pop off and hit us. And there we go. Set that aside. Now that that's off, the shifter should come out of the base. Just like so. Now we need to remove the nut and bolt here that holds the shifter onto the upper rod. Should as well be a set of 12 millimeters. And it is, I'll work that out. Gonna be a little bit of goopy, goopy grease there. Make sure you want to clean and re-lubricate for reinstalling. So that comes out. We're going to take this bushing out of here or let it fall out of there and uh, move it over to the new shift rod lever. Looks like someone's upgraded this with polyurethane already. These are another point of failure where you get a lot of play in your shifter. So look at these bushings, make sure they're in decent shape still. So go ahead and reassemble this. Snug it down and make sure we got ample grease down here in the ball and socket at the base of the shift lever. I'm just going to put a little bit of extra grease in here, put some fresh in here, make sure it is good and lubricated. All right, 
now we'll just pop that back into the cup. Which sometimes is a little easier said than done. place a couple wraps to make sure it's in place we'll put the snap ring back on the base and we'll be ready to reinstall this shifter assembly so once you get the cup seated back in the shifter put your snap ring back on to hold it all in place Sometimes it takes a couple wraps of the hammer to get that cup to seat the snap ring. But uh, once you get that set, like I said, we're ready to go ahead and drop this whole assembly back into the vehicle. All right, guys, so I broke out my phone for this section. I really can't get the camera or lights in here, so bear with me. We're going to be replacing the rear bushing now with the polyurethane. So a little hard to show, but right here, You've got a 12 mil bolt on either side of this bushing, and this bushing just comes up. I've already got them loose. I'm gonna try to pull them out by hand. They should be finger tight. They do got some corrosion on them. Yeah, so that's one out. And two out. And I'm seeing an issue in my plan because this old worn out rubber one has a much thinner uh, base than the new polyurethane cart boy one, which uh, the older models, uh, the uh, not older, the newer models and the WX have a longer bolt here. So I'm going to dig through the bolt bend and see if I can find some longer fasteners to bolt this rear bushing in. If not, we're gonna have to skip it for this installation and the customer will have to replace it later on. All right, crisis averted. Found two longer bolts in the bolt bin. That should work. Let's see if I can mount the camera up on the cup holder. <laughs> Sorry for the jankiness here. And uh, put these bolts in and get this new bushing. Let's make sure they're spaced the same. Yep, they're spaced the same. So hopefully this will work. It's a Subaru dadgummit. It ought to work. They're universal. 99.9% .9 of the time. Get them good and tight. I don't really have to worry about torquing down on them too much because they do have a metal sleeve in them around where the bolts go through. All right, 
All right, both of those are nice and tight and our rear bushings in. That said, now we can go ahead and reinstall the shifter. All right, guys, so just a reverse of the removal. Fish the rods down the front. And we'll push forward enough that we can get the rear of the rod lined up with the poly bushing and slide it back through the hole. There we go. Can we get it all the way in? Let's leave the rods over here loose till we get back under the car and get it up in the air. Just reseat all of this. Let's put the plate back on, run our six screws back in. All right, all the screws are tight. Pulled this back up as you just saw. And we'll pick the console up and set it back in place. Line up our holes, run all our screws back in there. All right, now we can put our trim piece back on. It just pops in place. Screw our shift knob back down. And our parking brake trim piece. Just pop that back in place and secure the two screws under the console lid. That does it for the interior. All we're gonna do is guide that up onto there. Slide it forward and we'll guide this rod forward and onto this stud. There we go, just need a little help from the pry bar. Get her back cinched down on there. Now I can put our plate in place. And the nut, tighten that back down. Again, like I said, if you still have your spring, you would uh, attach your spring, but this one's missing.
Now the most fun part, getting the roll pins back in place. All right, roll pin, big roll pins all the way through. Now we all gotta do is run in the inner roll pin. And run it in flush. And that will do it for the install. Like I said, if you've got your spring, install your spring, well, that's it. All right, guys, now for the results. Of course, I'm not gonna end the video without showing you the improvement. Not that I actually showed you it before, but I think you've all seen a really loose old Subaru shifter. So here's the WX shifter the poly bushings and the new U-joint. Barely any slop compared to what it was before. Nice tight short throws. Much improved over the factory Outback shifter. All right guys, that does it for this video on getting all the slop out of your old Subaru shifter. Thank you so much for watching. Hope you enjoyed and I'll see you in the next one.